Hi today, all day. We've got a great show for you on this Tuesday morning, including an all-day exclusive chat you can only see here. Let's kick it off with Pop Star. We check in with Chanel, who's covering all the buzzy headlines for Carson. Take a look. Carson's out, but Chanel's here with Pop Start handling those duties today. Yes, we start with Christina Applegate today. Fans recognize her from decades of memorable performances on the big and small screen. But today, Hollywood is waking up to startling news. The comedic, comedic icon announcing a frightening diagnosis. Overnight, emotional news from Christina Applegate, the Emmy Award-winning actress revealing she has multiple sclerosis, writing, A few months ago, I was diagnosed with MS. It's been a strange journey, but I have been so supported by people that I know who also have this condition. MS affects the brain and spinal cord, causing problems with vision, movement, or balance. Applegate adding that it's been a tough road, but she'll keep going. A comedic powerhouse for more than three decades, Applegate skyrocketed to fame in the 80s and 90s, portraying oldest daughter Kelly Bundy in Married with Children. Oh my God, an m and m And I got a W and W. The breakout role leading to a successful television career spanning decades, including an Emmy-winning stint on Friends and a legendary role opposite Will Ferrell in Anchorman as ambitious newswoman Veronica Corningstone. Well, you have bad hair. Applegate is also currently starring in and executive producing the acclaimed Netflix drama Dead to Me, earning her three Emmy nominations over its first two seasons. This isn't the star's first health scare, though. After being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2008, she worked to spread awareness about the disease, sharing her experience with an MRI screening. I can't stress enough, it saved my life. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This morning, support pouring in for the star, Applegate keeping a positive outlook on her future, sharing a comforting message of support with fans. As one of my friends that has MS said, we wake up and take the indicated action. And that's what I do. It's great to see her sharing that positive message. And of course, we are all wishing Christina well. Next up, Garth Brooks. While performing in Kansas City over the weekend, the country music legend spotted a sign in the crowd that read, Garth, it's our first concert. So what did he do? Take a look. Your first concert? Your name starts with G. My name starts with G. That's cool. Gives me chills. He wow. took the guitar right off his back and handed it down to the young girls. And he in autographed the crowd. it. Yes, talk about setting the bar high for any future <laughs> concerts they go yeah. to. Anybody want to give me their drum set? Yeah. Right. All right, finally, the Olympics may be over, but we can't get enough of this record setting gold medalist. On Monday, the track champ shared a look at the sweet reunion with her family in Los Angeles after weeks abroad in Tokyo. Take a look at the greeting she received from two year old daughter Cameron when she walked through the door. I love you so much. Oh, when they wrap that arm around the neck, it's just priceless. Big group hug with Dad Kenneth Ferguson giving us all the feels. Yes. Oh, I bet yes. that felt so good. Sweet reunion. Welcome back. Today in the third hour, we meet a mom turned skateboarding sensation. She's known as Auntie Skates and she's taken the internet by storm. Check her out. This is about a mother who embraced skateboarding and even created her own persona on TikTok. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Auntie Skates. When I get on a skateboard, it is the most liberating feeling I've ever experienced. And when I get in a, in a sari and I start flying in the bowl, it's just really fun. Meet Orby Roy, also known as Auntie Skates on social media. She's a 46-year-old mother of two who started to skateboard just three years ago. In January of 2021, it was a particularly dark period for, I think, a lot of people with COVID and everybody just seemed depressed. People weren't even hiding it anymore. So I created Auntie Skates 
as a way to spread joy and positivity. I started a TikTok account. I had never even been on TikTok before. And I took a character, Auntie, and I just started posting really fun, uplifting videos. Hello, everybody. It's Auntie. I'm out in the cold weather in Canada to do a rock to fakey. First try. Ready? I had created the character Auntie some time ago in improv, and I may or may not have been disciplining my children with that accent. That was one piece of it. And the other piece of it was I, I was getting on Instagram more, and I started following young South Asian women. And I started to notice that they were complaining often about Auntie. And every culture has that toxic person in their lives the person that tries to bring them down, the, the person that's always judging them, you know, the person that says, why aren't you married yet? And every culture has that, my culture included. So why not be the person that builds people up? And it wasn't just her age that made her stand out in the skate park. As a South Asian woman, I do wear traditional dress often for special occasions, weddings. Any chance I can to wear a sari, I will wear it. A sari is a traditional Indian outfit that women wear, and it's a long piece of cloth that you wrap around yourself. It comes in really bright, vibrant colors. Roy was always someone that took risks, even when she was a young girl. My parents are immigrants. They came to this country in the 60s. And I think when they came to this country, they had culture shock. The great thing about my parents is that I knew that I would always have my parents' support no matter what crazy thing I did. And with Auntie Skates, the fact that I was doing skateboarding in the first place, they were behind me immediately. Family support has always guided Roy, and it was her husband, and ultimately becoming a mother that made her want to pick up a skateboard and try. She just fell in love with it. Next thing you know, I get a text message of her dropping in on a quarter pipe. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that was it, that hooked you. I've watched my kids' confidence grow so much as they skateboard. And they also learn a little bit about perseverance. Sometimes I'm mad, sometimes I'm frustrated. They see all the emotions that I go through and they see me get through it. And that's what they're, they're mimicking that behavior now. Sometimes people are at the skate park and they're a little bit nervous. And I always go to those people and say, you know, say, how are you doing? Do you need some help? And now they do the same thing too. It, it makes me so proud. As a 46 year old woman who gets into a bowl and skates in a sari, I want people to know that you can do anything you want. Be kind to yourself and follow those dreams. Do that thing you thought was too late to do. Do the thing that makes you happy. Auntie believes in you. I'm, I'm ready That's to go great. to skateboard. That's sweet, yeah. Good. Yeah. Have you ever skateboarded? Right I know, right? Have you ever skateboarded? No. Ever? Uh, you know, I'm risk averse. That's why you <laughs> Even when you were a kid? No. I didn't skate Never tried it? I'm not like Jagger. playing the violin? I'm not like Jagger. <laughs> a different level. I wasn't as cool as Jagger. But you know, she did demonstrate that you're, it's never too late to start skateboarding, I, love that. I guess. Yeah, that was beyond inspiring. Yeah. yeah. And all I can say is I really hope I'm there at that age as well. Oh, I think that. that would be amazing. Will be. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, we're throwing another beach party on the plaza, and you're invited to sit back, relax, still got some summer fun. Check it out. Hoda is enjoying some vacation, and Chanel Jones is taking the chair today. The big chair. Don't you like this chair? I, I was like, am I supposed to let you know that my feet just kind of dangle? Is that okay? Yes, that's okay. And okay. we got some hula dancers just for you. These these dancers are from Hawaiian artist shows here in New York City. They have been around since 1968 and perform traditional hula all around the world, I and they will that. be entertaining us throughout the show. There's such an energy out here on this Tuesday. So much fun, right? I've been talking to so many of you guys. We have Utah. We've got. Florida, we've got Des Moines. I mean, literally, some. See, I, I know we've got some Texans too. I hope they a lot of leave. Texans, South some Carolina. Texans. We're all here this morning. Okay, well, yeah. Chanel, first of all, what do you think about our little setup? We've I love got this. sand, we've got a cabana, we've got palm trees. This is the real deal. I just need a Mai Tai or okay. something. <laughs> well, I'm hoping, I'm working on that because, <laughs> Chanel, you've been doing the show, you've been up since four. Yes. You were on all hours. <laughs> yeah. And I always feel bad, but I also know, because you, you posted a little something we're going to talk about. Okay. But I almost wrote to you, I know what your favorite hour is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I love Jenna. This, I told everybody on the radio this morning, you're like my cousin. Uh, uh oh, there goes Did your I lose it? 
You know how this morning you said yes. you didn't have a back for your earring? That keeps happening? Me too. I know. We're free. I told you. We're like we have so much in common. There okay, so tell me about this little surprise. You so posted. this is so sweet. So I walked in this morning, and you know when you have to do four hours of a show, you kind of try to get yourself amped up. Yes. So I walked into my dressing room, and our production assistants just put a little note card on my notes for the day, and it said, oh, there it is, busy day, all four hours, yep, you got this. Isn't that so that sweet? That is so sweet. I said, it felt like my mom put, like, a note in my lunch in my lunch <laughs> box or something but like also, that. also, it's just, it probably took them one second to write that, and it I made her day. I appreciate you, Veronica. Yeah, we love you, Veronica. There you go. She doesn't even realize how that, like, seriously made my day. Okay, also. So let's dig it. You were told it's a beach party. Yeah. But you're wearing a blazer. Can you explain? So I just, you can't whisper anything to your cousin during commercial break because it will come out on the air. That's true. So I just told Jenna, so I woke up this morning. You know when you wake up, you just don't know what to wear? Yeah, every day. So, that, so tell me why I still have this blazer. I wore this blazer, guys, for the finale on American Idol when Carrie Underwood won. <laughs> I kid you not, some, and that was when I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and somehow this blazer has followed me. And this morning I was like... How about this one? The Carrie Underwood blazer. The fact that I still have it is crazy. Is that anyway. your longest item? Absolutely. Everything else I've purged, but for some reason this was special. You know, I have I jean this. shorts, cutoffs, and I'm now a mom of three children that Keep I've had them. since high school. They do not fit. They show areas that should not be shown <laughs> to anybody except my husband. And I have them, I can't get rid of them because See? there's such nostalgia there. Does anybody have like an item of clothing that you've had for just years and even though you don't wear it, you just save Pansy? it? Pansy? Right? Do you have something cool right? that you've kept? Pansy's turning 80. 80. Any piece of clothing you've had forever? She said, I do. She has a few. Of a course few. she does. There All right, go. we love <laughs> Garth Brooks. Do y'all love Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood? Yes. Like we do? Okay, we love them. Well, 12-year-old Garth Brooks superfan got the surprise of a lifetime at the Country Stars concert in Kansas City this, this past so weekend. This is so cool. My neck of the woods. So here's the deal. Garth spotted the fan. Her name is Giada. She was in the crowd with a sign that said it was her first concert ever. That's the setup. <laughs> now look what happened. <laughs> What has a G on it that I'm thinking of? Your name starts with G. My name starts with G. I love Garth Brooks so much. Right, and now we love him even more. So he went on, he signed it, yes. and then he gave it to her. Pretty cool concert souvenir, huh? That? What was your first concert? My first concert so good. What was I went, it? My mom took my sister Barbara and me okay. to Paul Simon's Graceland. Oh, okay. We were well, first I, grade. The Graceland tour, we were like at the cut. I can't remember the Dallas, someplace in Dallas. Yeah. What about yours? Wait, yours and topped it. You should have asked me first, and you could end it with Graceland because okay. it's hard to hard to top that. My very first concert was MC Hammer. And boys to men and brandy. Wait, that's they ridiculous. were like a, it was a trio. Were they situation. singing? It's the end of the road. And when then when they sang, uh, let's not. What's it? The water runs dry. Some kind of song. And then the stage starts to rain. I mean, it was amazing. Wait, wait, but what, did boys to men sing? It's the end of the road. Oh, that's right. Still now I, I can't, can't let go. right. But the headliner was MC Hammer. Too legit to quit. Oh, I loved that, that whole thing. I so love there it. You go. I, by the way, you probably knew all the dance moves. <laughs> have you taken your kids no, in concert have you? yet? So my daughter's very first concert was actually with your little one here on the plaza. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. For Megan Trainer, It was the International Day of the Girl. Yes. Michelle Obama was here. Yes. Your daughter, uh, Vale, Savannah's daughter, everybody's hopping around yes. dancing. Clara, my daughter, was overwhelmed. I mean, she just... It was almost like sensory overload for her. Same with Mila. It was yeah. too much. But now she but wants also, to redo. It was Megan Trainer and Kelly Clarkson. Oh, that's right. And remember, Kelly Clarkson's little daughter became best friends with Vale, and Mila, there's this picture of Mila where she's like... <laughs> she was jealous. The first time she Have I jealous. told you my Michelle Obama story really no. quickly? So Michelle Obama's there, right? And I'm like, Clara, hello, as any mother would, this is your moment. Like, you know, yeah. take a picture with her. Clara's like, mm -mm, mm -mm. And I'm like, Clara, trust me, trust mommy. You're going to want this picture later. So, <laughs> so the very end, Michelle Obama comes back over to her and she says, Clara, would you like a picture? Oh, we already tried it. We once. already tried. And she said no. Horrified, horrified. So Michelle comes back over. She says, Would you like to take a picture? And I looked at Clara and I'm like, We will go to the American Girl doll store after this. Take a picture. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Bribery. <laughs> right, but you see, you should see the picture. It's, yeah, when, I'll have it when forever. Mrs. Obama's there and you have to do the bribery. <laughs> right. All right. Anyway. So do you remember learning to drive? 
Of course. Okay, getting your driver's license yes. is one of those huge milestones for any teen. And actor Mark Wahlberg gave his 12-year-old son, Brendan, a good head start with an early driver, driving lesson. Okay. Take a look. Best way to learn how to drive is to start with the golf cart. This boy knows how to drive. Yeah. Watch the road, not the camera. First driving lesson with Dad. That seems oh, pretty so calm, cute. right? Yeah. I mean, mine was stressful. Yeah, who taught you? My mom tried, and then we. Just, I just took driver's ed. Yeah, like over the summer. No, the parents, like I'm, the parents cannot teach kids how to At drive. At all. Because what about you? How did you learn? Well, I mean, and you were like royalty. So no, were you allowed to like drive by yourself? I was. That's a fair question, right? Come on. I was, royalty is a little bit of an exaggeration. I mean, but you couldn't just go but, driving down the street. But I was. I was living. Um, my dad was the governor oh, okay. of Texas, and so the, the DPS, which is the Department of Public Safety, which are basically oh. police officers, oh, taught Barbara and me how to drive. No way. I know. Do you have pictures? I. I That's should, classic, I should, you know. but it was also kind of horrible because we're not, we, you know, nobody's yeah. good when they first start. Oh my gosh. My parents felt very relieved though. <laughs> One, that they didn't have to do it, but two, that probably the best drivers in the world In the world us. taught you how to drive. And I'm sure you're a great driver now, even mm -hmm. though we're in New York. I'm an okay driver. driver, but yes, I like to drive. And speaking of cars, <laughs> according to a new survey, over half of Americans say they've lived some of their very best moments inside vehicles. Absolutely. So this survey was commissioned by Digital Insurer. They also found that 48% of people talk to themselves in their car. 42% say the car is a perfect place to cry. Tell the truth. You've cried in your yes, car. Yes, everybody cries. Right? Have Come you on. cried in your car? Yeah, yeah, no question about it. 37% of people shop online in their car. Basically, they're hiding in their car from their children. <laughs> it's like the pantry life. for me. And here's another thing. The average driver said they had at least six awkward talks in their car. I've had some awkward talks. I've had all of the above in but my car. But being in the car is kind of a good, do you it's, have good memories? Oh my, it was a rite of passage. I was 16. Yes. Um, you know, I, a lot of us in the country in Wichita, we drove to school. Yeah. I had a Ford Escort. We packed all sorts of kids in that Ford Escort. Probably shouldn't have. Barbara um, and I had a 1991 um, Jeep. Jeep. Classic. I can't remember Jeep, but we, the two of us shared it. And it was not fair because I ran track before school. So I would drive it and then somehow Barbara would have to she get would to school. I, I mean, I basically just took it. You had the car. I know. But Aquins. yeah, so many good memories, right? Yeah, I love it. Love okay. it, love it. You know the saying, I get by with a little help from my friends. Well, that could not ring more true for two little girls from Long Island. There's one year old, yes. R Riley Masiri. She started daycare in June and had a tough time adjusting. Aww. She wasn't eating or napping and she would cry every morning. I love this. Okay, so it turns out one of her classmates, also named Riley, Riley Carpenter, had a similar experience. Okay, there are the two Rileys. Oh, look at that. So the good news is Riley number two is a hugger <sighs> and the two girls began a daily ritual where they hug multiple times a day. That's so cute. How sweet is that? Riley's mom says the hugs have changed everything for her little girl. She's now leaping out of her arms every morning at drop off, running into school. She told us we can't quote, we can't begin to thank Riley C <laughs> enough for helping our Riley find her joy. It's a good story you when love kids are going like back to the school. Riley C and Riley, you know, all those because Poppy, there's two poppies in her class. Oh, really? Poppy B and Poppy H. And are Poppy B happens to be Nate Burkus, Nate Burkus's daughter. No way. So we always are dying laughing because it's like Poppy B, Poppy H. I love and, then, that. and then it goes on to The Bachelor. That's you know, so and it's like Sarah and M. Poppy is such a rare name to me. I know. Poppy's, Only in New York, I think, are the right, two, two poppies. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway. coming up next, hope you have a tissue box nearby. This is going to be good. We have a summer surprise reunion. I don't know why I'm whispering. Right here on the plaza. <laughs> that'll make you smile and cry. Smile and cry all at the, at the same, same time. time. You it's know, I love good. to do that. Yes. It's my favorite thing to do. And here's an etiquette question from the Washington Post. Okay. You want to hear it? Yes. The reader says, my partner has leisurely mornings and gets up to work in the afternoon. Over dinner, I ask him how his day was, and he tells me he was busy. He only worked four to five hours. Oh, my goodness. I'm up at 5 a.m., manage several people at a retail shop, clock overtime every week and more. Is there a respectful way to respond to a self-described busy day? Ooh. Do you want to be the marriage counselor here? I just think you can't do tit for tat. I second that. So the, the judges here have spoken, and I feel like... You have to, everybody's problems are relative. Everybody's stress is relative. For somebody working four hours a day is enough. Yes. And for someone else, they, and they need a little bit more. You know what I mean? And everybody does their own thing. Like, yes. I'm not going to say to you, 
thanks a lot for not having my thing tied tight yeah. and for pouring water on my feet in the last segment. Well, I would never say that <laughs> because but, I don't want to keep a tit for tat. Well, in my I just friendship. feel like you, that won't survive. The tit for tat won't survive, no, right? I mean, we're not marriage no. counselors, but I don't know. They and we're not in a marriage, but no, you cannot do that. Yeah. I feel like you have to just, and I do wake up earlier than Henry. Do you? Of course. You know, and I will say, so I am here in the mornings, right? So my husband takes my kids to school yes. every morning. Same with Henry. And so I'm always like, well, you're lucky. You get to take him to school. You get to make breakfast. You have like these calm mornings. And then there was one day where I was off. We had a scheduling mix up. And I was like, you know, let me just be home and take the kids to school. Yes. It was a lot. It's a, like, I mean, it's the one's crying. This one doesn't have her homework. I, I mean, know. it was just. So I was like, you know what? Everybody has their job. I think you know? appreciation is the most important 100%. thing. It's so funny because this morning Henry texted and he's like, I just was cleaning out. I was uh, cleaning out this. Now I have to actually get to work. It's nine and I've been cleaning and up leaves or whatever, wow. something in the yard. And he goes, landscaping Hank out. <laughs> And I wrote, landscaping Hank is the hottest take. See? And then he said, well, you don't like him better than insurance bill paying Hank? And I'm like, no, I love him too. Yeah. Welcome back to Day Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today All Day. Would you like to sing them the new theme song? For some reason, you know those days when you wake up and you're hype? I don't, I guess so. Have you but ever usually, had those days? I don't know at 4 or 5 a.m. if I wake up hype, but you did today. I woke up hype. I woke up at 4.30. I got up and I worked out. Donna, actually, wherever Donna is, you came to out work out with me. Before the show? Before the show. Wow. Donna and I become workout partners every once what in a while. What do you guys do in the morning? What we do you work do? out. That's amazing. I know. We work out. We do dancing and fun That's stuff. That's awesome. Um, but then we were taping some stuff and I was sing like, for some reason I was singing really? and rapping. So what do you think it is? Did you have a great day the day before? I had a good day the day before, but I also think, you know, those days where you just have, I think working out. I think you're right. I think we need to start working out more. It's one of those things where we know it in theory, but you know, and they say you never regret it on the back end when you work out, you right? You never regret going to the gym. Sometimes yeah. you regret eating a s'mores cake. <laughs> well, I was just about to say, because on this show, because I've been here all four hours, I have had, what did we start with this morning? Cocktails. You had a had cocktail? A cold brew with mojito, with like a mojito oh, flavor. No. I've had mango salsa because Dylan did cooking with cow. They like made mango salsa? Every hour we eat. So every hour I eat. And yeah, so I feel I'm like stuck. that's, uh-oh, oh, your that earring. earring. Both of us have well, had those earring days. Because we didn't have a bath. You just said you weren't going to put it back in, but and you I, did. Yeah, I did. I feel incomplete. I know. Like, I've done, I did a whole show, one earlier, without an earring, and no one noticed. So. No, nobody notices. Right, fine, we'll just you know what? Up. Also sitting on these chairs is like a new adjustment period. It is. And I have you noticed that I am sitting, you, people are probably like, leave Gina alone. I'm like leaning and <laughs> sitting no, in I'd my like lap. No, I like that you're sitting in my lap. Because otherwise my feet will dangle. What happens if, let's see what happens. Well, this is not too bad. No. Oh my gosh, this, can we redo the show? Is it more? I could have pushed back. But I've been sitting like this the whole time. I know, and I've been like leaning over in your lap. I, I, I'm not exactly sure what happened. We've been playing those Plaza Palooza games. It was hilarious, but what <laughs> happened to me? So there were red, what do you call them? Red cups. solo cups looking like in the shape of a pizza with water in them. <laughs> I like how you're describing it. Well, I never played beer pong as a kid. I was a late bloomer. I know. You never played beer pong? No. We're not supposed to say oh. beer pong, but you've oh. never, you never, have you never played it? No. I think I know what we're doing Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you, I've never played. You should I'm the, actually, like, the this looks is I'm getting from I the plaza. There. Well, yeah. Gavin's judging you. Everybody's Rainey judging. is judging you. Zach just judged I you. Did. He's talking bad about he you is. right now. I just, I've never. So, can I tell you my, whatever, college graduate self, I was like today, well, finally, this is as close as maybe I'll get. That's the only time never you played know what? it. Seen and I was in a sorority, went to many a parties, never what played What was the wildest thing you ever did? I was not very wild. I didn't even have my first, like, drink until my first job when all the TV people, the news people go out after the show. Well, that's good. <laughs> I so. had my first drink before then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we talked about this. The thing is, I tell myself, you don't want to peek too soon, Chanel. It's true. So, no, my mom would have loved you. You would have been invited over. My mom does been, love you, but no wonder. I would have been invited over. No, you would have been like invited biggest, over. It wasn't until my first job in Topeka, Kansas. Like What, right, what was your first drink? Um, it was a, um, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting? Pe Grenadine, no, uh, something sour. Oh, Pisco Sour? Oh. Say one more thing, Pisco sour. Pisco sour. One more sour. What's something else that's sour? Oh, my gosh. Somebody, Zach. Is that anybody? My first the drink. Sour. No, Pisco sours. I've had that in Peru. Yes. What sour? That was it. 
I've never had a Bidori sour. I don't know. That's what it was. Did you like it? It was delightful. It changed my life. Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna just say. Well, again, you know what? That's all we got for this episode of Today Talks. <laughs> we learned some more uh, things about Chanel. Keep watching for today. I am a good role model day. for your children. You're a That's great what role we model learned. for me. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.